Joined now by Coastal Carolina head coach Jamie Chadwell off of the best football season in the history of Coastal football, finishing number 12 in the college football playoff poll, which if we had the expanded playoff like we may be building towards in a couple of years, you would have been seriously in the discussion, but undoubtedly a dream season. And you've got a, you got a great flow working right now. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, early in the season they say, hey, Coach, what what do you want to do if we, go, if we win the championship? I was like, whatever you want me to do because I had no shot of winning it. At least I didn't think we did. No faith in our team. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I'll grow one. And so <laughs> here I am. So I've been on the couch for the last three months. <laughs> uh, and so, but uh, it is what it is. It's flowing pretty good right now. So Going back and examining why things went the way that they did last year, what separated Coastal so substantially from everybody else? You know what? I, I think the big thing is, is in 19, when I took over there and we took over, it was getting them to believe they could win. And in 19, there was no belief, no expectation. I think in 20, after going through that, they're like, hey, we we believe we can win now. And I think the we didn't have as bad of players as what people thought, you know, uh, because, oh, they stink. You know, they saw us play the play. And I would have been the same one. I would have been voting this last two. Full disclosure. Yeah, I'm sure you all did. So, uh, you know, offense there. And, hey, they stink. They're not going to be that good. And and we were better than what people thought, but we just didn't have our chemistry right. Got our chemistry right. Obviously, our quarterback took us to another level offensively. Yeah. And uh, what most people didn't realize, too, is, you know, our defensive coordinator, he took over very late in 19. And so yeah. that's we were able to actually really grow that defense as well. But I, I think our belief in each other and in what we could accomplish – was so much stronger. And then once you start seeing that confidence happen, we started winning some games. And uh, and then you're like, all right, hey, we can go play with anybody. And it just starts snowballing. And, you know, as a coach, when you get that, you're just like, hey, all right, you try to keep that edge, that yeah. chip on your shoulder. Like, hey, this team picked us last. These, these Georgia Southern radio people picked us last. We're going after <laughs> them. You know, you just use something to motivate them every week. You talk about at the beginning of the season and the preseason, not necessarily knowing what that season was going to be. What point in the year was there a moment that you're like, you know, this could be pretty special? Truth be told, it was our game versus you guys. And the reason why is we come off a big win versus uh, Louisiana. Quarterback's hurt. So we play we play uh, versus a really good team, you guys, with uh, without our starting quarterback, who our starting quarterback was – it gotten everybody, you know, hey, we're pretty good. And, and that was a tough, hard-fought game And going into the fourth quarter. And we found a way to win it. 19, we found a way to lose those games. And that was when I told, her, you know, our staff, hey, no matter what situation, we can find a way to win it if we continue to do those things. And that, I think that game just, it, at least from a standpoint offensively, that, hey, we can find a way to win without our without our guy. And that gave our whole team confidence we're going to figure it out. And I, I think that was the big one for me that said, hey, we're going to figure this out. And for a guy that won player of the year, is preseason player of the year going into 21, George Southern didn't see him. He was hurt. He had the injury. So Eagle Nation, while they've seen the numbers, they've seen some film, they probably don't fully understand what Grayson McCall represents. You're around him. How would you describe it? Uh, um, two things. He, he – uh, He's highly competitive. The thing that he does uh, that mesmerizes me is in is uh, for a young guy, he never gets rattled. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't have any turnovers. I think he had four total turnovers this year, you know, in 11 games or whatever. Yeah. For a young guy, and here's what people don't realize, is very limited in the spring practice of the year, and then COVID hit. Yeah. He was quarantined all summer. Yep. And the first really stuff that he got going in was August. And so he's really just scratched the surface. So if he walked in last year, he looked like he was uh, going to a uh, country concert with a six pack in NASCAR. <laughs> you know, he'd have a t he had no, you know, looked like that guy. They did five touchdowns against yeah. Kansas. Yeah. And, but, you know, now he's actually been in the weight room. And, and I think from a physical standpoint, he's going to be a lot better. But uh, he just, he handles it, he handles himself where. When you have good defenses in this league, which you do, he was able to not get rattled at a young age, and I was very—that was just very impressive for our team and our, and our staff. And there was a belief in him that, hey, no matter what situation, he's going to find a way to make a play. Look, I'm sure that you've heard from more than enough people. You're not the hunter anymore. You're the hunted, and you're not going to sneak up on anybody. But with the way that you prepared the team last year, how can those lessons keep them in the same frame of mind to attack this season and have the kind of success that you did? Well, I think it I think it transitions well because you know last year 
we 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 worked hard on playing with an edge, a chip on our shoulder, and it wasn't necessarily because we were picked last. It was more so that what we had to do to try to win games. Sure. And I and I think the last, you know, you talk about not sneaking up on anybody. Let's let's say when did when did everybody say, hey, they're pretty good game eight, whatever it may be. So the last few games, we were getting attacked because hey, we got to go, you know, because especially after your, after your your first place in the East there. Uh, you know, so I think that experience is actually going to help us. The main thing that we have to do, uh, we win game. We don't. We're not good enough from a, a overall talent standpoint, like some of these teams in this league, to roll the ball out and they're going to win the majority of the time. That's not who we are. We have to do things a certain way, the certain mindset to win games, and that's what we started establishing in that team. Obviously, you saw a lot of good about it in 20. Yeah. We're going to continue to have to do that. And our whole off season, everything this whole summer was geared towards that. I know you've probably been asked about this a million times over the last year or so, but the week where you had college game day coming to Coastal, that week was crazy for you guys, bringing in BYU at the last minute. What was that week from your perspective like? I know Kevin Davis was pretty busy that week, but – what was it Who? from your perspective? Yeah. <laughs> oh. So, so you know, Sunday through Wednesday, we're we're all preparing for Liberty. Now, I think I think uh, BYU might have had a heads up on it a little bit, but we're we're preparing for Liberty. And I and I'd heard a rumor, hey, is Liberty Liberty got COVID, whatever, and nobody told me anything. So Sunday through Wednesday, we get off the practice on Wednesday night, and said, hey, there might be a chance Liberty's out. I'll let you know tomorrow morning. That's what that's what our ED told me. So okay, so we so I told our, our staff, hey, we better get some BYU film because we had said that BYU might be in. We got so we we told our GAs just break down a couple games just to see, just in case. Thursday morning, eight thirty, nine o'clock. Hey, Liberty's at BYU's in. Okay, and so uh, <laughs> and so basically all we did uh, it was great. all we did is is. We basically had a, a walk through on Thursday just as an introduction. Friday had a little bit of practice. And then Saturday, game day's doing their thing. We're actually watching game day and we're still game planning. <laughs> and we like we just look at each other and go, Game day's right outside. So we go outside for a couple minutes and look and then went out there and played the game. You know, and it was it was that I mean, it was that quick. Credit to them for coming out and, and wanting to do that. Uh supposedly we only had five thousand fans there. Supposedly it was loud. I mean it was unbelievable. There's uh, I mean, it was an electric uh, atmosphere. Uh, and regardless if you hate us, if you're a fan of us, which I know Eagle Nation hates us, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> whether you hate us, it was a great college football game. Like, it was a great college football game, no matter who you were cheering for. If you just watched that game and said, you know what, heck of a game. And uh, it was. And obviously it came down to the last game, but it was it was two teams fighting hard, and, and it was it was a special day. And game day being there, you know, first team ever in the Sun Belt to do that. Yeah. Uh, who knows if we'll ever get to experience that again. I mean, that's a that's a cool, cool, cool deal. And due to other circumstances last year, that was one of the ten times you guys were on national television last year. And the fact that you went 11-1, and won, you at one point were a top ten team in the country, that had to just explode that program and really the university to get that exposure that maybe wouldn't have been there in the other cases. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's uh, I mean uh, from a from a academic standpoint, from a retention standpoint, applications, enrollment, you know, all those things are up right now, you know, and and a part of that, uh, not the whole reason, part of it, we were we were on we were on national TV a lot. Yeah, I mean a lot. Uh, and I mean, I, one week we didn't get on there, and I was like, "What? What's going on here? <laughs> they don't like us anymore." What's going on? on this thing? You know, and so we took advantage of that, you know, and 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 we had a window there, and who knows if we we'll ever get that window again? But our team took advantage of that. One of the things I told them, I remember this when we got ranked early on, uh, you know, and I said, "Hey, we lose one game, we're done. You'll never be on. We'll never be ranked again. We'll never be on TV." You know, and and I said, "So if you like this, if you enjoy it, we got to keep." keep winning and they just kept it and nothing no matter what happened no matter how much notoriety was coming uh you know I, tom Rinaldi came one time and you know he makes everybody cry and i was like, oh crap we're gonna be in trouble because we're <laughs> i said because he's doing something and or was it we're naughty or it was how whoever it was anyway somebody did it and you somebody that's gonna make you cry yeah somebody's gonna do something and <laughs> it was uh but our guys just kept going, you know, and it, it uh, and the notoriety it brought, and and what I and all those things are positive. I, I think truthfully, it gave us a, just a huge spirit among our our students and our community there in Coastal. You know that hey, we're proud of what this university is represent what we're about, and and you can't put a price tag on that. You know, 
Jamie, congratulations on the great season. Congratulations on the Eddie Robinson Award. I know you received that yesterday, and we're going to see you in Statesboro on November the 6th. I don't know how cold it's going to be, but looking forward to that one at Paulson Stadium. Oh, well, hopefully it, it's not a monsoon like we were down there last time. We will do our best. That one's, yeah, that one, that one was, that was brutal. But <laughs> looking forward to being in Statesboro with everybody. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you.